Shabbat Shalom. כן, שבת שלום. אני לא כל כך טוב בשופר, אז לזה אני לא תוקע, אבל לאיבה יש מה שצריך. אז תודה לאל, ואני בטוח שיש גם עוד כמה כאן שיודעים. Oh, okay, sorry, I had to have on and on. Okay, so we thank Ava for that very clear blowout of the shofar, uh, calling everyone together. And now we call these holidays that are coming up appointed times. Appointed times, special times. To remember. And to, and to guard over and to give the Lord the honor. Even as believers in Yeshua, sometimes we think the Jewish holidays aren't uh, applicable to us. But yes, God is working through them to fill them, to fulfill them. Even if you're not so familiar with them, if you've never even thought of the Jewish holidays, there are appointed times that God is still fulfilling. He says every jot and tittle he will, he will fulfill. And uh, there's still many things that he's completing in the prophets and in the scriptures until he comes. Today I'm going to be speaking of the shofar and the new, a new beginning. We're going to read from Leviticus. Leviticus 23. On 23, 23 to 25. Okay. And you'll see it's about Trump. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, shall have a Shabbat, a memorial of blowing the trumpets, a holy convocation. Don't, you won't do any servile work, but you will offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Father, we thank you for the Shabbat, the Shabbat before this day of uh, the blowing of the shofar, the, the new beginning. We pray that you'll open up our thoughts and our hearts to hear you, just like you want us to listen to the blowing of the shofar, that our hearts would listen to you. And you are faithful. We know this, Lord. We thank you. To the end, you are faithful. There's not so much that's um, written about the new year, but it's called the mem memory, memory of the blowing of the trumpets. There is something to remember. Like we ished the Elohim. There is a, um, a sacrifice that's given. That's a total burning up sacrifice. It comes on the seventh, the first day of the seventh month. And it's called the start of the new year, Rosh Hashanah. So 
A rosh, a beginning, is the beginning of something new. So repentance and forgiveness, it's always a new beginning. Anybody that repents, this is a new beginning for them. So um, this holiday, as I said, the beginning of the seventh month, and it's all determined according to the um, according to the um, the moon. It's a new moon, so we don't see it. So, there's something beginning in the dark, and then later we see it. Isn't this just like the Lord? He starts in the dark, and then he brings his plans into light. So, this seventh month, in the yearly calendar that he gave to Israel, it's a, it's a whole plan of redemption. This Every appointed time is related and points to the plan of God in the framework of redemption and the Son of God returning. So we remember, just as in the Lord's Supper, we remember his death until he comes. So prophetically speaking, God gives his people, Am Israel, and the believers in Yeshua, he, he brings us to confess our sins as a people before the Lord. You know, when I was saved, I didn't even think about sin. I just think about, oh, I didn't believe in Yeshua. Now that I do, I do believe he's the, he's the Son of God, the, the giver of life. That's what I started out with. You know, I wasn't even thinking about sin. But God calls us to return, first of all, to return to Him. And then He prepares us as a, as a, as a uh, people to realize our sin. We, can't, we, we, we don't say, oh, I'm saved in grace and that's enough. No, He brings us, and He brings us a plan, and He brings us personally, and He plans to bring us whole, His whole people to the realization of sin and and that's um, by the sacrificial system it's pointing to sin so all the more we recognize his grace he saved us from slavery being enslaved to sin so he calls us, he calls his people to begin to confess as a people, as, as, his, as people under his covenant, to confess our sins and, and then how much he is ready to forgive. That's what Yom Kippur is about. As a whole people confessing sins, that he is ready to ready to forgive. So if you receive his forgiveness, then 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 you're receiving life. But if you ignore this, you're ignoring life. Jesus is coming to dwell amongst a people. But what kind of people? A holy people. Now, currently, there's a people that do, don't believe him, that don't really acknowledge him. But he's coming to dwell amongst a holy people and a righteous people. And the dwelling amongst his people is represented in the Feast of Tabernacles, or as we call it in Hebrew, Hag Sukkot. Every, everything is accompanied by a righteous father who's leading us 
who's instructing us. And if we are an attentive son, we'll, we'll receive him. We'll even receive his chastisement because we know he's leading us in the right way. In, in his holiness. So there's honor, there's holy, holiness even beyond uh, even beyond this, but into the Jubilee, into the into eternity, where we'll have shofars blowing again to to proclaim this holiness, and all of creation is yearning for this. And each one that Jesus has purchased through His blood will be rejoicing to see Him face to face. He will be in the midst of his people, and we will be free from evil and darkness. It's so interesting that nothing appears in the Tanakh, in the scriptures, about, about, about this, uh, his return, I think he means, in, um, in the um, Rosh Hashanah, in the beginning of the new year, or Yom Kippur. So, just a minute. So, there's nothing about um, uh, these uh, memorial blowing of trumpets. But for the priests, the priests were called to, to the, but the priests were called to blow the trumpets and they blew the trumpets to gather to gather the people, it says, for the day of the Lord. In, as the day of the Lord grows, grows closer, the priests were blowing the trumpets. They were to gather uh, the people for the assembly. The um, blowing the trumpets were also calling people for war, for gladness, for appointed peace, feasts, and the beginning of Israel's months. And these blowing of trumpets identified who belonged to him, because certainly Israel responded to them, but other peoples, other people um, wouldn't be. And so if we are receiving this sacrifice of the, of the Lord, then we hear this trumpet blowing, uh, calling us to him. So everyone that believes, that, that loves him, that believes him, God will draw close to him. And, we, and you can be assured there will be judgment on evil. This is what it means to trust in him. We in ourselves are not good, of course. Oh, there's only one who is good. And he brings us to his goodness, to his holiness. So we're always in this understanding that it's not us who's good, but it's him who's good in a total 100% way. And he brings us to himself.
So, God drew attention to his people and his plan by the reestablishment of Israel 70 something years ago by proclaiming, I am still here and my people are still here. He spoke to the entire world through this. Some were listening and some were not. To some, that trumpet call of Israel being reestablished was a, was a clear um, clarion call, we could say, that God is still working. God is bringing people into his kingdom of righteousness, and he is still working with his people, wanting to bring them into the new covenant relationship. He is still saying to his people, we must be born again by the spirit above. Only in his righteousness do we come into his kingdom. Okay, so in the present, it's not just in the future, he will be uh, fulfilling prophecy. He is fulfilling his word and prophecy. In Deuteronomy, we can read in um, 10, for chapter 10, the uh, purpose of blowing a shofar. It's to bring the people to gather together. It's also um, used to call them to war. And according to the um, way it was blown, you could discern you could discern if it was to gather together or to go to war. As a, as a guy, uh, 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 and the shofar was also heard in a day of rejoicing. Maybe a, think of a birthday or an anniversary. Um, each appointed holiday, you could blow the shofar to communicate to the people. And it was used the, to proclaim the beginning of each month, which was the new moon, which you didn't see. Everything was to remind people of the presence of the Lord. Everything he's done. He is the sovereign one of the world. He is the creator of, of creation. He keeps his promises. He is faithful. And it reminded people that it, the Israelis in particular were his people. So as we listen to the shofar of the Lord in our lives, we are his people. It, it reminds us of him. In the seventh month of the first day, it includes all, all of these things in beginning the year. So as he has started something, he will um, complete it. The number seven is very good. It's not really a perfect number, but it's a good number. When he, when he saw his creation, he said, very good. But just remember, the perfect, where there can be no improvement on, is coming to us. It hasn't arrived. No sin, no enemy Satan. Now, that is perfect. But we have to pass through what God calls very good. Tov ma'od, very good to get to that perfect eternity. So there's hope and there's faith in all of this. So God is pulling together his people, collecting them together for salvation through repentance and forgiveness. That's the only way. 
So he's worked with each one of this this way, and he intends to work with his people like this. And he, bear in mind, he's preparing us for um, a kind of catastrophe, a, a time of trouble that will be coming as he, as he works with his people. There's still hard times coming. And he is preparing his people also um, uh, uh, for those troubles, like we could say in an international way. From day one, Israel was faced with um, uh, with fighting for its existence. So many people think God is finished with Israel. There's no significance in Israel, and there's no promises to keep according um, between God and Israel. But no, it's not. It's um, not true. So many people, so many people, even in Christendom, um, have come to the conclusion that Jesus is finished with his people, uh, that the Lord is finished with his people, because they never did come to repentance after all this time. But we hang on to the fact that God is faithful and he will accomplish what looks impossible. The uh, shofar is still proclaiming the gospel. The people of Israel are still being called to the Lord, to return to the Lord, to return to your Creator and your Savior. So the whole world, in actual fact, is being called to the Lord by the shofar of the call to salvation, call to repentance, because a judgment is coming. And as I said, there will be, of course, a division of the sheep and the goats, those that belong to him and those that don't. That, that don't. In the Holy Spirit, finally, there will be a true peace and unity. So I'm speaking of a spiritual battle. It is hard to evangelize in Israel and share the gospel with people, isn't it? There's feedback that can be very hard, even results um, very hard on people when they're sharing the uh, gospel with people in Israel. To share his, to share the real, the truth, there's always struggles, and the enemy is at work here to to um, to teach people to be unforgiving and not receive forgiveness. But the Father is still working, still working to bring from every tribe and tongue people into his kingdom, into his family. And he's still calling us to work with him. As we heard last week with uh, David Loden, at the end of it all, we need to be born anew. The Jeru New Jerusalem will be called our mother. We need to be born from above in order to be in the kingdom of God and see him face to face. So all of the appointed times are holidays. We have Shabbat weekly. Weekly is a reminder of the Lord. Every month, the, the uh, 
the new month was marked. We're not called to, to um, celebrate that, but each month was marked. And then there were the particular holidays, Passover, Sukkot, Yom Kippur, Shavuot, the New Year. And being born into his kingdom, we celebrate the Lord every day. So we're called to take a, a break, a cella, to remember the Lord, to consider and meditate what these holidays and feasts mean. It's not just uh, once a year or once a month, but our daily, daily in our walk, in the spirit, by faith. We are walking by faith and we are walking in the expectation of the Lord's return. It's always in our heart. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. We're going to read in closing two portions from the New Testament. Revelation 11, 11 to 15. So Revelation 11, chapter 11, 11 to 15. Oh, 15 to 18, he said. Okay, it's about the seventh trumpet. The seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. He shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before God in their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee the great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry. Thy wrath has come, the time of the dead that they should be judged, that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants and prophets, to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. So here we see that in this call of the shofar, there is a righteous judgment. Jesus is judging righteously between death and life. He is, he is closing what God has started, what the Lord started, before he takes his throne of David forever. And then let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. Fifty to to the end of the chapter. Now I say this, brethren, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised in, in, up incorruptible. We shall be changed, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, 
and this mortal shall put on mortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting, O oh, grave? Where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. So, stand. There is hope. Take your stand. There is faith. Take your stand. There is love. There are things that God still will be doing. He is going to fill every jot and tittle. He's not going to leave anything out concerning very difficult things and good things. But we're looking to that hope on the horizon to continue to the very end, to come to the perfect. We want to get there. I want to be there with all of the congregation and see Jesus as the, as the victorious one. It's like a symphony with a conductor to worship him, to be in his choir, as it were, or his symphony together. And whoever has died already in the Messiah is waiting for the resurrection. Sometimes we think of, oh, they're already in heaven. Somebody died, they went to heaven. It's not exactly like that. They're also waiting. They're waiting for the big resurrection together. So we walk in hope. We plan to be there together. So let's close our meeting. Let's stand and just pray together. So, Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you for your appointed times that remind us every day even, every week, every month, every season, every year. You don't get tired. You're not weary. You're continuing. Thank you, Father, for your great faithfulness. Thank you that you were so ready to come to manifest yourself being born. You gave yourself on the cross. You, you were resurrected. You appeared to people. You went up to the heavens and you will be returning to us at the appointed time also. Work with us, Lord, at this congregation, Nachalat Yeshua, throughout the country. Lord, that walking in you, all those walking in you will be made ready for your return. That we will be we will be made holy. We will be walking in your holiness as you work with us. We trust in you in all of this, Yeshua. Amen. May God bless you and show his face upon you. And may he give you peace, the ironic blessing, which I didn't quote exactly. Um, and may the peace of the Lord and the love of uh, the peace of Jesus and the love of the Lord and the whole, Holy Spirit rest on each one of you. So a happy new year and have a new beginning in Yeshua. Amen. כמו שהאוד אמר שאלוהים נאמן והוא מגשים הבטחות שלו, זה ככה גם נאמר בשיר, אז נשאיר אותו ביחד. מדור לדור אלוהים באמת נאמן. 
Yeah, Simba. 